Hello. So we've been talking about uh, different applications of analog multipliers, but how do we implement an analog multiplier? One of the possibilities is using op-amps, which we shall see in this video, um, where basically we are using logarithmic and exponential amplifiers. Um, and the idea is that we use the properties of logarithms, and specifically, we're going to be using the fact that the uh, logarithm of a product is equal to uh, the sum of the logarithms. So log of a times b equals log of a plus log of b. And the logarithm of a ratio is equal to the difference of the logarithms of the individual signals. So log of a over b equals log of a minus log of b. Let's see how that can translate into a practical implementation of um, a multiplier or a divider circuit. Let's start with multiplication. And we're basically working backwards with regards to the those two equations that we just presented in that uh, we start with uh, two signals, X and Y, that we want to multiply. And so the first thing that we do is run them through a logarithmic amplifier, um, uh, typically referred to as a log amp. And basically what we get at the output is uh, the logarithm of either signal. And then we add them together um, and finally, we take the anti-log of that sum, um, and what we get at the output is the product of the two signals. It works a little bit as follows. Uh, the output of my logarithmic amplifiers will be, in the first case, log of x and log of y. And now I am adding them together, and uh, that's equal to the log of x times y, just by the properties of logarithms. And now I can take... Um, my um, anti-log of that function, so basically e to the log of x times y, and that's going to give me x, y. So that's what we get out of this first circuit. And then um, I can also implement division, again, applying a similar concept, except now instead of adding the two logarithmic signals, I subtract one from the other, and then I compute the anti-log to get the ratio of the two signals, applying the second properties of logarithms that, that we specified up there. So we will have log of x minus log of y in this case. And so what I will get out of uh, this is equivalent to log of x over y. And then I run this through the, my anti-log amplifier. And when I compute e to the log of x over y, I basically get out um, the division of the two signals. Before we get into the uh, implementation of multiplier circuits or divider circuits uh, using logarithm and exponential amplifiers, uh, we're going to be taking a closer look to these two building blocks, the logarithmic and the anti-logarithmic amplifiers. So a logarithmic amplifier or logamp is essentially a circuit that converts an input signal to its equivalent logarithmic value. So the input to the circuit will be a signal x, the output will be proportional to uh, the logarithm of x. I've represented uh, the mathematical function on the left-hand side and a circuit that implements the logarithmic function on the right-hand side. This is uh, a basic implementation of a log amp, which is the basic diode log amp. Notice that uh, it's connected similar to an inverting amplifier, except it has a diode connected in the feedback path as opposed to a resistor. Now notice that because there is uh, no current flowing into the input terminals of an ideal op-amp, I'm going to make the assumption that the current flowing through the resistor is equal to the current flowing through that diode. And so I have that by KCL of current law, IR is equal to ID. And then I know from Ohm's law that IR is equal to V in divided by R because my negative input terminal of the op amp is connected to a virtual ground. And uh, my current through the diode, uh, I can derive from Shockley's equation. And I have that ID is equal to uh, the reverse saturation current times E to the VD voltage across the diode 
divided by Vt, the thermal voltage, minus 1. Now, um, for positive values of Vd, um, e to the Vd over Vt is going to be much greater than 1. Now remember that Vt is the thermal voltage, so thermal voltage, which is approximately uh, 25 millivolts at room temperature. And so I can approximate my ID as Is e to the Vd divided by Vt, my thermal voltage. And now, if I apply again my KCL equation, I will have that V in divided by R, which is IR, is equal to, approximately equal to, IS e to the VD divided by VT. And notice that uh, the output voltage, V out, is going to be equal to negative VD. VD is the voltage across this diode. And again, because the negative input terminal of the op amp is connected to a virtual ground, uh, then V out is equal to negative VD. So where VD is equal to negative V out. So I can solve this equation um, by writing uh, E to the VD over VT is equal to uh, V in divided by IS times R. And now I can take the natural log on both sides of the equation. And so I'll be left with Vd over Vt equals the natural log of V in over Is times R. And uh, therefore Vd is equal to Vt times that natural log. And since V out is equal to negative Vd, I will have that V out is equal to the negative Vt times the natural log of V in divided by Is times R. So notice from this expression that V out is proportional to um, the natural log of V in. And again, there are two proportionality constants there. So what we have gotten in reality is V out is equal to K1, first proportionality constant, times the natural log of V in divided by uh, K2 or K2 times V in, however you want to write it. But the important point being that the output voltage is proportional to the natural log of um, the, the input voltage. An alternative implementation for this log op amp could be to connect a BJT transistor in the feedback path, uh, as shown in the figure, transistor Q1. Uh, and we can see from the figure uh, that V out is going to be equal to uh, negative BVE for that transistor. And basically, uh, this circuit has the same configuration. We know that the, um, the current flowing through the resistor is going to be equal to the current flowing through that transistor, that collector current IC, uh, just like we did before. And the exact same analysis applies because there is also the same exponential relationship based on Shockley's equation uh, that applied to the diode applies to a BJT transistor. Uh, in other words, we know that IC for the transistor is going to be equal to ISO, the reverse uh, collector current, times E to the uh, VBE divided by VT, the thermal voltage, minus 1, which we can approximate as ISO E to the uh, VBE divided by VT. If we look at this equation, we will see is exactly identical uh, to the diode equation that we had in the previous example. And so we can write our uh, output voltage using the same analysis as negative VT times the natural log of V in divided by ISO times R. Uh, so identical operation. The advantage of this circuit is that it provides an improved dynamic range with respect to the one of the diode because of some of the uh, diode non-idealities. If uh, you want to take a look at a sample IC circuit that uses logarithmic amplifiers such as this one, you can take a look at the AD 538. Uh, it is basically a real-time analog computational unit, or ACU, 
uh, that uses logarithmic amplifiers. And uh, this is by no means the uh, most efficient or best performing implementation of a logarithmic amplifier. This is perhaps the simplest one, the basic diode logo pump. It has some limitations in that, um, for one thing, it is bandwidth limited because of the bandwidth limitation uh, of the amplifier. And so if you look at the AD538, for example, you will see that uh, the frequency response, the bandwidth, a uh, typical value will be around 400 kilohertz. If you look at um, logarithmic amplifiers using different implementations, like the AD641, uh, which is basically a, a modulating um, multiplier using a log amp, you will see it can run up to 250 megahertz. Um, and it simply uses a different type of logarithmic amplifier, a different architecture, which is known as the successive detection uh, log amp. Okay, so that's to say um, one of the limitations of the circuits uh, will be bandwidth. The other major limitation being that, as you can see, um, the, the diode can only function in one direction. The current can only flow through the diode when it is forward biased. And therefore, any multiplier that is based on uh, logarithmic amplifiers of this form is going to be a single quadrant multiplier. So it has single quadrant operation.